Welcome to the best of Come Follow Me. We have listened to dozens of podcasts. This week, our focus on podcasts is 3rd Nephi chapters 1 through 7. These chapters describe the events among the Nephites surrounding the birth of Jesus Christ. So as we go through and listen to all these podcasts, sometimes we hear ideas or statements that we don't want to recommend. And we'll cover a couple of those now. As in previous weeks, a podcast claimed that Nephi failed to record any of Samuel's prophecies and was chastised by Jesus. Interestingly, this podcast put a scripture on the screen for every single discussion point except for this one, which is because the scriptures don't actually support this. So in 3 Nephi 23, 11, And Jesus said unto them, How be it that ye have not written this thing, that many saints did arise and appear unto many and did minister unto them? Clearly, the only thing that was not recorded was that many saints did arise. We will link to a separate video that has some more detail on this topic. I think there's sometimes a tendency to want the prophets to be wrong or to do things wrong. Maybe to justify that we're not listening to them today. Uh, You know, hey, prophets are just like us, but they aren't just like us. Nephi raised the the dead. That's not just like me. There was one podcast that claimed that when it says that Zemnariah was hanged on a tree, that it meant that he was crucified. Mm. I don't think there's any precedent for that. Deuteronomy does say that if someone is decreed to die and is hung on a tree, that they have to be taken down before the night is over so they can be buried. They can't stay overnight. I can't find any record of Israelites practicing crucifixion. It did start before the Romans, so with the Assyrians or Babylonians, and those were enemies to Israel. Israel. So I don't think that the Israelites would have adopted such a practice. And most of the penalties and punishments in the law of Moses were not torturous or things that took a long time. Like if there was stoning, that happened a lot, that happened quickly. And so there's no reason to even say that they would have. It's a really good point about the the same day. It's almost like the law of Moses is saying, sometimes people need to be killed. We're not going to drag it out. We're not into this torture thing. Among the non gadian robbers, this is a righteous time. Yeah, like everybody believes. Laconius yeah. and Gidgadoni are, are righteous people. So. Yeah. I used to read 3rd Nephi 1 and 2 the way that I heard it told in many podcasts this week. That is, you have righteous people who are looking forward to the sign and you have wicked people that are going to kill them. And the wicked necessarily come around because they see the sign. And then before you know it, they're all denying the sign in 3rd Nephi 2. What we learn in 3rd Nephi 1, 22, true that Satan starts to send forth lyings, and yet the more part of people did believe, and they were baptized, and there was a great remission of sins. This is not mere mental assent. Uh, you got me. I guess there's no fighting it now. Well, sign me up for your group. It says they converted and had remission of sins. I know it's pretty terrible to have planned to execute people if the sign didn't happen, but there is precedent in the scriptures for people that have done terrible things and completely repent of them. So we shouldn't treat them as though they just went along with it, because that's not what it says here. Of course, there's scriptural precedent for people responding favorably to signs. We have the five that were at Nephi's tower, and they saw a sign, and it says they were converted in prison. So they chose to take that sign seriously and build faith on Christ afterwards. Yeah, so Lemon Lemuel saw an angel, and they immediately resumed murmuring. Alma saw an angel, and he gives himself to fasting and prayer. So the angel itself doesn't tell you what happens to them later. What you're saying is somebody had said that it must have been the people who didn't believe before and only believed because of the sign who, who then fell away. Yeah, and right. my point is the scriptures do not correlate the group. To that after. may have been true for some of them, sure. but, but people still have agency, right? Yes. There are probably some people who stayed faithful the whole time, probably some who did exactly what they said, probably others who, when they saw the sign, had a true, genuine conversion and then stayed faithful after that. Samuel tells us in Helaman 14, why they're giving signs to the intent they may believe. And he goes on to say that we can choose life or death. You know, all these evidences that we see from the Book of Mormon, there are so many of them. Like anybody who wants to know evidence of the Book of Mormon is going to find thousands of pieces of evidence. And you still have agency what you're going to do with it. Well, it's, it's similar to those signs we have today. I can see the temples, but I choose whether or not I make myself worthy to enter the temple. And then furthermore, I choose whether or not I actually go into the temple. Please check out part one of our podcast where we each share 
our highlights, our favorite moments from the various podcasts and discuss them. This is a podcast I have listened to multiple times over the years because I really love the way that Ben Wilcox takes you through the personalization of this. So we hope that this helps you in your personal study of the scriptures this week. If you're looking for a topic that we haven't covered yet, there are a lot of links below. So please check the description and follow our Savior. He loves you.